I add 4 to this number, I get 23.5. So I'm going to find out midpoints right there. Are you with me? Can you tell me just very quickly what's the next midpoint without doing any math? So, that's kind of nice. How about the next midpoint? 31.5. Someone on the right-hand side of the room, how about the next midpoint? My right. Righties. Next midpoint. Perfect. How many midpoints are we going to have? Well, 39.5. We'll have 40. What's the next one? And lastly, we'll have 47.5. And those are the values that are right in between each class. Raise your hand if you're okay on the lower class limits, upper class limits, and the class midpoints. Feel okay about that? Good, very good. Remember, you don't have to do the work for every one of these. You just have to know the first one and, and know your class width. If you know your class width, it becomes very, very easy here. So we should have eight lower class limits, eight upper class limits, eight class midpoints. Let's talk about class boundaries, and then we're going to fill this thing out. It's going to look beautiful. I'll tell you what else we can do with this. The class boundaries are used to separate your classes without gaps. Here's how you do it. What you do is, and by the way, I know it, it's a little confusing where, what class boundaries actually do but they're not used in any computation. They're literally for one thing and one thing only. What you're going to do is be able to make a histogram up with this information. That's it. It doesn't tell you where things go, like where you're going to tally up numbers. That's, that's what your classes do. Uh, the class boundaries really are just to separate classes so you don't see any gaps. Are you with me on this? OK. So class boundaries, they're the value that's right in between your upper class limit for one class and the sequential lower class limit for the next class. You can average them. Add them just like you did the class midpoints and divide by two. Or you can just kind of think about that. What's right in between 21 and 22? Right? Mm -hmm. Is it louder? 21.5. Yeah. It's 21.5. Do you know what you're going to get if you add 21 and 22 and divide by two? You get 21.5. <coughs> Someone in the middle of the room here, can you tell me the next class boundary? Can you tell me that? Say it louder? Yeah. You can still use that class width thing, by the way, or you can do the math if you really, really, really want to. But you can average these two, or just add four, or just think about it, 25, 26, what's right in the middle, 25.5. Next ones, we can find all of them if we'd like. We're going to have 29.5, I hope. Is that right? Yes. All right. What's the next one? Should we have? 49.5. Does 49.5 make sense to you how we get that? There's not another class, but you see that we're, we're just going up by four every time. Now, I know there's eight here, and there's eight here, and there's eight here, and right now we have eight here, but there's actually one more. There's actually one more. Notice that these class boundaries are really like slicing up a loaf of bread. Okay, so we have this, this loaf of bread that goes from Eight, uh, just before, well, 18 to 49, and we're slicing it up here and here and here and here and here and here and here. If you have a loaf of bread and you slice it, you're going to get one more piece of bread for however many slices you make. Does that make sense? You get a loaf of bread, you slice it once, you have two slices. True? Slice it three times, you're going to have four slices. We've sliced it using these classes, but that means that we're going to have this little extra one to begin with because we have to start somewhere. So can you tell me what the very first class boundary is going to be? Yeah, that's right. Notice how in this case, the class boundaries, they really don't make a whole lot of sense for 17.5, do they? Well, if you consider to have 0.5 of a year, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It makes sense in this case, though. If we are considering these numbers to be your age without decimals, because, I mean, if you're over the age of, like, I don't know, seven, you stop saying, I'm like six and three quarters, <laughs> you know, don't you? I don't say that I am blank age point three. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. 
obviously. I say I'm blank age. Uh, but, but you say I am 22. Are you 22? Yeah. Are you seriously? Yeah. I should work at a fair. <laughs> uh, so if you say I'm 22, you can go I'm 22.4 or 22.6. If we're just counting the, the integer of our age or the whole number of our age, then 17.5 works, right? Because you're either 17 or 18. You're not going to count any extra people with 17.5 is what I'm saying. The 17 year olds are excluded automatically. You with me on that? So it's, it's kind of a, a weird thing to say, but it's used really just to separate some classes from each other. That's it. It's not mathematically being used in any way up here. So we do have a first one. We're going to have one more class boundary than we have classes because we have to start somewhere with end somewhere. Okie dokie. Now let's go ahead and fill this thing out some more. We've already made our classes using our class width and our lower class limits and our starting spot and our range of numbers being subtracted, divided by the number of classes that we want. That's how we got all this junk. Now we're going to fill it out by asking people how old they are. So how many people are between the ages of 18 and 21? Raise your hand. 18 to 21. Keep them up because i got to count you. Okay, so we have 25. How about 22 to 25? Awesome. How about 26 to 29? like 80 and just never aged. Wouldn't that be sweet? That'd be better. <laughs> just immortal, people. I mean, uh, we can do yourself in 30, 30, 30. Yeah, I did. But I could be lying. I've been known to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Counting myself in 18 to 21 year olds, too. So. <laughs> anyway, um, so we have all these frequencies for each class. We have it, so you know, just by looking at it, where the majority of people are, right? Because this is, I mean, typically this is what's going to happen in most of your classes. We're going to have people scattered, but they're going to generally be right here, and we'll have some people over here, but most people are, are going to be here. And that's what frequency distributions can show is trends and patterns. If we just had everyone's age down on a piece of paper, it'd be hard to kind of see a lot of trends and patterns, especially if there's lots and lots of data. Here we only have maybe 40-something. 40 something pieces of data. You start having like a thousand pieces of data, and you can start seeing trends when you do this, but not if you just have them listed out. It's really hard to see. So, this is one way that we can organize our data. Are you okay on getting your frequency distribution? Okay. Well, what do we do with this stuff? Well, one thing that we can do, we're, I'm going to show you some extensions of this concept. One thing we can do is create what's called a relative frequency distribution from this thing. Are there any questions on this? This stuff first? So a relative frequency distribution. We're going to add some, uh, some columns here. say this is going to be relative frequency. Relative frequency distribution. Here's how this one works. What it does, it compares the frequency for each class to the total number of data items you collected. That's how relative frequency works. This one just gives you the number of people. 
relative frequency is going to give you, write this down please, a percentage. This is going to be a percentage. It's going to compare the class frequency to the total number of, your, of items in your sample. How could we find right now the total number of items that we have just collected? Without having me count every person in this room, because that's really boring. Yeah, if, you can, if every person had a spot, which we made sure of, right? Every person has a spot because that's how we created our frequency distribution to make sure that, that would happen. So if every person has a spot, if you add all these up, it's going to give you a total count for your sample. Okie dokie? Okay on that one? I said that twice today already. Old school. Bring back the okie dokie. So add them all up. If we add them, we get the 25 plus 10 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1. How much is that? I got 43. We're going to use a, a letter for that. That's a lowercase n. It's 43. That's how many items we collected. You can also signify it this way. Have you ever seen this symbol before? It's like a Greek letter, sigma, in sum. It means you're adding up all the frequencies. That also is the same thing some of the frequencies, or n in some cases it's called. So we want to relate the class count to our n, or to the sum of our frequencies. We're going to create a percentage, and here's how you do it. If you want to find the percent of people who are in this bracket, you're going to take the number, your frequency, and divide it by the total class count, or the total n, sum of frequencies. So class frequency divided by the sum of the frequencies. Can someone out there with a calculator, you should all have a calculator at this point. Someone out there with a calculator, can you do the 25 divided by 43 and tell me what you get to the third decimal place? 0 0.581. 0 0.581? Like that? Did anyone else get 0.581? Yeah. Did you all get 0.581? Yeah. I hope you have a calculator to follow along because part of this class is calculator. I mean, you are going to be using one like every day. So bring a calculator. So 0.58, what's 0.581 mean? Hmm? 0.581. Sounds like a cool number rolls off your tongue. What does it mean? 58% of the people are in this graph. That class right there, 18 through 21. Perfect. How'd you get 58%? We can change proportions, which is like a decimal, into a percentage just by moving in two spots, right? Mm -hmm. So if I say 0 0.581, maybe for your boss, you don't say 0 0.581 because he might have done what I asked, what you did when I asked you to go. I don't know. So maybe we go, okay, instead of 0 0.581, we could write this as 58. Point one, but you better put a percent if you're going to do that. Either way is fine with me. I really don't care. You just need to know that when we say 0 0.581, what we're suggesting here is that 58.1% of our sample was between the ages of 18 and 21. That's what we said. Does that seem reasonable for our class? Sure, yeah. Most people.